All right, so let's get started here. Um, what I want to do today is show you basically a breakdown of what to do and how to get started when you've exported an arc map to Adobe Illustrator. So here I have Adobe Illustrator open, although it's a Mac, so it doesn't look like it's open. Um, so let's do this. And I'm going to open a file that I just exported from ArcGIS. First thing you'll see is it'll say, do you need to update the typography? I always hit update. If you just hit OK, it's not going to work well. So hit update. And here's my map. Let's zoom in. And the first thing you always want to do is, well, a, other, after you notice that the map came in OK, is to go to the Layers panel and make sure that everything is looking hunky-dory here. So one thing you can do quickly to see where which layers things are in is to just turn on and off the eyeball for different layers. So here, other three is obviously the map elements, the things I added in um, the display layout in ArcGIS. Layers are all the map elements. And then there's this other. Now, I know this and, and you don't because I didn't do it here, but I gave the neat line a background fill and apparently that's what this other is because when I turn it off and I turn layers off there's nothing so this is the neat line background fill so we know what these are and one thing that's really good to do in Illustrator is to start labeling things accurately so I'm going to double click on other here and type um, map elements just to give me an idea of what's going on I'll type map layers and the other when I turn it off, I still see a gray background. And if I expand the map layers, I'll see that there's a background here as well. So I don't really need the other. So what I'm going to do is highlight this layer and hit the trash can. Am I sure I want to delete it? Absolutely. And we are already pretty well on our way to cleaning this up. Now, one other thing you want to do is we're going to probably be adding some things in Illustrator like titles and maybe some cool um, neat lines and, and, and uh, new frame lines. So let's add a new layer. So with map elements selected, I'm going to click on create a new layer. And we'll just give this a name we can remember, something like Illustrator Components. And so anything we draw in Illustrator that we want on top of everything else will go in this layer, and it's already there. All right. So by and large, we pretty much have this set up uh, how we want. And there are two approaches here. As a professional cartographer, basically, if you have Illustrator at your disposal, it's a great tool because there's so many graphical things you can do with Illustrator that you just simply can't do in ArcGIS. And I know Esri would disagree with me on that, but it's true. So there are two routes you can go. You can either basically just bring in data, manipulate it, and export it from ArcMap and do all of your design in Illustrator, which in many ways I, I recommend you don't do. Or you can do about 80% um, of the work in ArcGIS, design it, etc., export it, and then soup it up, to do about, spend about 20% of your time in Illustrator, um, basically dressing it up. And that's the technique we're going to use in this course this semester. So. Uh, in order to soup things up, though, sometimes you're going to have to manipulate them. And ArcGIS does some really silly things when it exports to Adobe Illustrator. And so what I'd like to do now is just show you some of those things. Basically, if you open the map layers here, and I'm going to unlock it, you'll see that every layer that was in the table of contents came in here as an additional layer. And, and that's great, you know, that's, that's uh, what we want. But when you start opening these up, it gets kind of hairy. So I'm going to open up, let's open up um, Major major Roads, Spain. So I'm going to open this layer up, and we're going to see a group. And if I open that up, we're going to see another group. If I open that up, we're going to see something called a clip group. If I open that up, we're going to see that there's a clipping path and another group, and so on and so on. Now, normally this goes about two or three deep in every single layer. Now, what are groups? Groups are basically more than one element in Illustrator. They're more than one element that has been combined so that when you click on it with the selection tool, which is the tool up here, the or letter V on the keyboard for short, if you click on it with that, 
it is going to select everything in that group. So I'll do that right now. If I click on a highway, it selects everything that's in this, this whole layer, this group layer. And when you have groups within groups, basically that means that what they've done is they've grouped certain roads together and then they group those with other certain roads, etc. And they've basically taken everything in this layer and grouped it together. Additionally, one other thing that's kind of annoying is they've created clipping paths in many of these groups. Now, clipping paths are very much, they're basically clipping masks. And so what ArcGIS has done is it's presumed that you have more data, and that generally this is true, more data than is showing in a data frame. So outside of the data frame, there is more data. And so what it has done is it has brought all that data in with, <laughs> with the map, or at least a good extent of it. And um, they've created clipping masks so that you can basically the clipping masks the size of the data frame in ArcGIS. So anything outside of that you can't see, but it's still there. Um, this gets really messy. So rather than actually literally clipping it to the data frame size and bringing it into Illustrator, it brings in everything and creates all these clipping masks. So I'm going to confess, this is a real pain in the, well, I'll just say it, pain in the ass, okay? But what you have to do is you have to go in, if you're going to start manipulating objects in, our, uh, in Adobe Illustrator, you have to go in and you'll get very good at this. It's Control shift g or Command shift g on a Mac. And you select the circle on the right of the layer and you hit Control shift g Control shift g Control shift g Control shift g And when you get to a clipping group, it doesn't work anymore. You then have to clip on the clipping path and hit Delete. And um, let's see. And then also, here's another one. We have to delete this clipping path. And even then, sometimes it doesn't work, but this time it does. So you want to ungroup, and now notice that all of the roads, etc., they're all selected right now. All these little red things, they're now in the major roads of Spain layer. Hit lock, minimize it. You're going to have to do this for every layer if you want to manipulate the individual objects. Sometimes you're not going to need to do this because the layer that you're looking at, you're not going to manipulate much. For example, the lakes of Spain. I don't even know if there are any lakes of Spain on here. I don't see any. So in fact, I can just delete that layer. I don't need it. I don't want it. Um, let's see. What other ones are there? Provinces of Spain. The labels for the provinces. Um, I actually, maybe I like how the labels are. That's very rare, of course, given ArcGIS's labeling prowess. But um, I could just lock it. I don't have to get rid of all these, you know, clipping masks. However, if you want to manipulate the roads, now what I can do, because we've ungrouped them and unclipped them and all that good jazz, is I can click on Major Roads of Spain. It selects them all. There are no caveats. And I can go in and um, change the color. If you hold down Shift when you click here, you get some more options. So I can make them hot pink or something, or purple. All right, so this is um, very useful. One other thing I want to show you is if you don't ungroup, etc., when you click on something like cities, major cities of Spain, it doesn't even look like I clicked on any anything. But then if you go up, you realize, oh, something's highlighted, and it's the clipping mask and all the groups within it. And so this is where it becomes a big pain in the butt, and you just want to go in. If I wanted to change the size of the cities or the color of the cities, and again, you just delete the clipping paths, and you hope that uh, you don't get uh, carpal tunnel. Now, sometimes what does happen, what ha is happening here, is the Control shift g doesn't work. And when that happens, what you need to do is go up to, well, um, one thing you can do is go up to the flow menu, highlight a layer, go up to the flow menu, and hit release clipping mask, and then it will let you do it. Now, in reality, this seems like a huge pain in the ass. Well, I'm swearing a lot. But in, in reality, it only takes about five minutes to go through all these layers and do it every four minutes. Hit save often, and um, when you're done, you can totally manipulate this map. All right, in the next tutorial, I'll have this all done, and uh, we'll start playing with some map elements.